welcome back to another video of H&H &H Express Model and Skill Trains. In the last video I showed you how I sniffed the DCC bus to capture some data packages and as mentioned in that video I would like to use that data to control my DC layout. So this is an analog layout, that means that you use a transformer and then turn up the transformer and then control the speed of the train. Well, my power section has now the motor drivers, which are controlled uh, via the Arduino. And I actually would like to connect the DCC to that Arduino. So I did some investigations on how that would be possible. And I was finally managed to get this train here over here at least running on this track with using engine driver on my mobile phone and this is not a DCC locomotive it's a DC analog locomotive so let me show you in a diagram how I did that and then I will show you how it is processed in the system so this is the old schematic and here at the link at the top you find the video in which I describe how it works. So now let's see how the new schematic is with the DCC EX control station in it. So to show you the power which controls the track I transformed that schematic into the Arduino itself to make it a little bit simpler. You have the DCC EX control station. You have a sniffer, a DCC sniffer. But to connect the DCC sniffer to the DCC EX control station, you need to have a DCC interface. I already explained that this is a fast switching optocoupler and a diode, a capacitor and three re resistors and this is how it is hooked up so first the ground so the ground goes from the power controller to the dcc sniffer and the dcc interface the 5 volt of the dcc interface is grabbed from the dcc sniffer and then we have the data pin that is the side of the sniffer so we're going to hook up the dcc main track to the DCC interface and then we use soft serial communication between the DCC sniffer and the power controller of the track. The DCC EX is controlled by JMRI and WeTrottle and here you have the DCC bus so if the DCC EX has power to the track, all packages are sent through the DCC interface to the DCC sniffer. And the DCC sniffer will convert that package into a shorter package message for the power controller. And that is done over a soft serial communication. That's a protocol which you can use within the Arduino to create different serial buses on an Arduino. So the DCC packets go over that pin, which is pin 8. Then the DCC sniffer will check what data is received and only sends the important data over the self-serial communication to the power controlled track. And then within the power control to the track controller that will send everything over the I2C bus to all the components which are there. And I will give you a demonstration on how that works. So here we are back at the computer and this is the layout of my track and we are going to concentrate on power section main track 03A. So let me bring up a camera feed. So this is the train which is positioned on that track 
power section main track 03A. So let me bring the other camera in front. This is the control board. And you see on the LCD display that there is no train detected. And I will show you with an arrow. There are blue tags around the two cables going from the sniffer towards the Arduino Mega, which controls the power. And that is the communication from the sniffer to the power section. And it will hold the short information to send information out to the track. So let me bring the uh, output of the sniffer in front. So this is the black screen with the sniffer output. It is directly from the DCC EX control station. And this is the output which is received over that cable with the blue tags on the Arduino Mega, which is my power controller for the power section at the top. So let me bring the controller in front, so here. And as you can see, there is no train selected at this moment. So let me select the train and I'm gonna select the NS2200. And as soon as I hit stop, you will see that it changes the information sent by the DCC station says it's lock 220 it's forward with 128 steps and then you have a, a whole lot of other bits behind it which we currently don't use the most important thing is that we know that it is the lock address 220 um, it is stopped and in a forward motion though that information is sent over over the serial port and it is transformed in okay i can see that it is lock ns220 that is decoder address 220 and the speed step is zero and then we have another zero that is actually the step which the server controllers need and it is in a forward motion so if i select reverse you see that the information changes and it is reverse motion but let's put it in forward you can also see it on the lcd display that the track changes from forward to reverse and back again so let me bring up the live feed from the train so this train is positioned on track 03 and let's do a forward motion so let's do it with simple steps and i know that around the 30 or 28 to 30 percent the train will start moving so i hope it comes through to the mic that whenever i hit the plus button you will hear the train buzz a little bit so it is eight percent twelve percent and you see that the uh, speed steps is now 15 and 483 so it's 483 which is sent to the server controller so let's Increase it now 20%, 24%, and you see the train is moving. And I will hit stop, and the train stops. And now I can click on reverse and do the same. Here the train comes and I hit stop 
and the train stops. So this is how I can use my DCC command station to control an analog train. And that is by sniffing the bus on a certain address and then send it over. So that's on this here in the black screen. So that's the sniffer. Then send it over serial communication and only three things are being sent. That is the locomotive address. It is the speed step and it is if the train moves forward or backward. So that all is transformed in my power controller that it is indeed the 2200 with lock address 220, speed step is zero, and it is now currently at reverse. And if I change it to forward, it changes to forward here as well. So that is how I can control an analog train with DCC on my train track. I still need to make some improvements and also need to measure the current, of course, which is run on each track so that I can run multiple trains. But for that, I need to know where the train is on my track. Uh, the advantage of DCC is that it doesn't matter where the train is on the track, the train is controlled by the uh, DCC address, the locomotive address, and it will be sent and translated in the locomotive itself. I have to translate it on my power board. So, and that is something which I still need to figure out how the best thing to control it. I was thinking of RFID so that I put sensors underneath the track in which I know, okay, the, position, the train travels around that area and I measure with RFID. I know that some people already have done it and uh, I will put a link to that site which uses RFID, but for end scale and especially for a track which is already laid down, it's a little bit difficult to do. So I need to check on other options, but that is for future. At least I'm glad that I made that breakthrough that I'm able to control that train via a DCC station, but then on an analog track. And I hope you liked it. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these videos, please consider to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.